Hello and welcome to the 44th video in this series programming a chess engine in JavaScript. So last video we were inside the evaluation function which is extremely small at the moment simply taking the material score into account for the given position. Well now what we're going to do is flesh this out a bit, not very much but a bit anyway uh, so that we've got some kind of evaluation function where it does co doesn't play completely material based only chess and get mated very easily. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to drop in, we've got already the pawn table, so I'm going to drop in the knight, bishop and rook tables, just basically a brutal paste in one go, just below here, and then I'll scroll through them and talk to them. Talk through them. So what we've got is we've got the uh, knight table here. Hang on a minute, let me just scroll things a little bit. So we've got the knight table here, and essentially that's just basically trying to encourage the program to put the knights in the centre of the board, and maybe, if possible, a little bit more advanced. So some bonuses up here on the sixth rank as well. But you can see here from the formation of the scores, it's sort of in a V fanning out from the second rank of the, of in this case, white. So it'll be flip for back. And there's a minus 10 here as well, just to try and encourage the program to develop its knights. What we've then got is got the, whoops, didn't want to do that. It was a minus 10, I think, wasn't it? Which I've just deleted by pressing a key by accident. Good, okay. So what we've then got is the bishop table, which is remarkably similar to the knight, except it's more symmetrical around the centre because bishops obviously are long range so it's just trying to keep the bishops also based around the centre of the board really and again a bit of a bonus for well a non-penalty if they move off their start square and then also got the rook table here as well and this basically tries to encourage moving rooks to the centre of the board and then gives a healthy bonus if they make it to the seventh rank with the assumption that'll be quite strong. Now of course you can do lots of refinement to that but surprisingly just these tables here make the engine actually play a reasonable game of chess and in fact what we'll be adding once we've got the program actually searching the first thing we'll be refining is not really how it scores these things but is simply making sure it detects uh, drawn end games for certain material situations. So in terms of the evaluation function itself we now need to let, actually use these tables, leverage these tables, and that obviously happens, we'll create a var called piece, because we're going to be looping through pieces, and we'll need a good old square, and this should be fairly familiar, what we're going to do here now is we're going to end up looping through all of the pieces. So what we'll do is we'll set first of all piece equals pieces and this has all been seen before in the generate moves, for example, pieces dot white pawn. And now we're simply going to say, oops, and I also need a var piece num here. So we're simply going to say that piece num equals zero. And I'm probably going to do a bit of copy and paste once I've got this first loop written out here. But piece num is less than, and we've got game board dot piece num and then our piece, plus plus piece num, and then we just need to get the square of this particular pawn, and again I'm just going to take actually this from the side here and copy because there's really no need, we've seen this so many times in the videos so far. We get the square that this white pawn's on, and then what we're simply going to do is we want to then take the score for this square that that pawn is on from our pawn table here. So we'll simply say then that our score plus equals because it's white and then we'll take the pawn table and now remember we want to convert it into a 64 base square because it's a one sq with square is a 128 so we need to put the 64 function around it like that and that's our bonus then for the white pawn and now we'll do exactly the same thing and copy it down the black pawn except now we subtract the bonus and here we want mirror 64, but we still want to be doing a mirror of the square 64 of square, like this. So that we, as we looked at in depths in the last video, flip the score so that when, for example, a black pawn is on, let's, well, let's make it easier example, when a black knight is on b8, it gets then the score for b1. 
and remember black scores get minus, white scores plus, and then at the end we flip the score if it's black to move. That's an alternative to holding simply a black score and a white score in separate variables. Okay, so that's really it for how the evaluation then works, and you can well imagine how all of the other pieces work. So I'm actually going to copy and paste the code in for the other pieces because there's no point in me going through and typing everything out because there are a lot of them. So I'm just going to drop this and paste it here and I recommend that you download the code. And all we're doing is, is just to quickly run through it, we've got the knight table for the knights as expected, bishops, the only interesting thing is for the queen we're using the rook table with the score divided by two, so not quite as heavy a bonus for going to the seventh rank for the queen and for going into the middle of the board as well, but there's really not much until you look at mobility later on to, to do with the queen at the moment, so we'll leave it like this. And one last little change to the evaluation I'd like to make is at the top of the file, let's say below the rook table, I'm going to add a new var and I'm going to call this bishop pair. I'm going to set this equal to 40. And this is going to be the bonus that a side gets if they've got the bishop pair. Or in other words, if a side has two bishops, it'll get this bonus. So it'll cancel each other out if both sides have two bishops. Otherwise, if only one side does, then they'll effectively be getting the bonus. So what we'll do is we'll say that if game board and the piece num of the white bishops is, uh, in fact, we'll say greater than or equal to 2, just in case of promotions. So if it's greater than or equal to 2, then what we'll do is we'll add on our bishop pair bonus here. And then the same thing we'll do for the black bishops, that if there are two or more black bishops, then we'll subtract from the score, because remember it's a bonus for black is a subtraction, the score for the bishop pair. So that's it then for our evaluation function for now. We'll be revisiting this when we've implemented all of the other things we need to implement inside the search function. But like I said, you'll be probably surprised at just what the chess is like just with these really, really basic features. It actually, certainly in the middle game, makes some kind of pretense that it's playing a reasonable game. The thing that's really lacking here, of course, is positioning the king so that it's encouraged to castle. So that's it for this one. See you in the next one. Thanks very much for watching. Qu comments, questions, criticisms, welcome. As always on YouTube.